Today, we're going to talk about organization and important buttons in the FL Studio toolbar. So let's get started. Please like and subscribe. So first thing we're going to check out here is file, which save, export, all that good stuff. A notable option in here is our new from template section where we can actually make our own templates and change default templates. Video on that if you're interested. But this is an option in the file dropdown that I find to be one of the most useful and important. We also have recent projects and revert to last backup in case your project crashes. There's actually a section for backups over here in the browser. But if you want to be quick, revert to last. We've got edit, and the only notable thing here is if I change something, we don't just have control Z, but we have control alt Z to continue undoing. Control Z will just go forward and back between our single change, which is great for AB and you probably know about. Next, we have add where you'll find all your plugins. Notable here is just our more plugins to go to our plugin manager. Patterns gives us our different patterns with just some options that we'll get in our channel rack as well. View gives us different windows to view, different options for organizing our interface, as well as selections to jump to within the browser, generator in use, generators. Now what's notable about this one is actually really good. It's our plugin performance monitor. And this will tell you all the plugins you have open and how hard they're running. That way, if you have a high CPU load or you're troubleshooting something with your plugins, all the info is right here. Another thing that's notable in the view section is close all windows, which is really helpful if you have a big mess going on in your interface, but you can quickly do that by pressing F12. Options gives us a bunch of options for random uses. Uh, a lot of these are gonna be switches over here and things that you'll find in other areas. Notable here though is settings, MIDI settings for your MIDI devices and audio settings for your latency and performance are going to be hugely important. If you wanna learn about these in depth, click above. Tools is going to be, well, some tools. Most notable is macros. There's some really cool stuff in here. If you have a lot of channels that you aren't using, you can select unused channels, alt delete, switch smart disable on for all plugins. If your project's struggling, all kinds of great stuff. These are extremely helpful. We also have an option down here called last tweaked, which will show you the most recently changed value. Some plugins don't let you right click to link stuff to it. So you can change something in the plugin, come to last tweaked, and do it from here. However, in some plugins, even that won't work, but you can usually solve that by going receive notes from your keyboard to that specific instrument and then linking it within that plugin. Next, we've got the help section. Most notable option here is going to be the diagnostic tool. Here you can reset FL Studio settings if you have any issues going on, run tests, as well as get FL Studio to try and fix song projects along with other issues. So now that we're out of those, we'll hop over here. We have our monitor volume. It says main volume, but I call it monitor volume because it's like turning the volume up or down on your interface. It won't affect anything within FL Studio. It won't get you clipping in your master. It'll literally just change your listening volume. Below that, we have master pitch. This will pitch and change the pitch of everything in your project. Besides the things you tell it not to, it is global, meaning it affects everything, but it is not the end all be all. If I come here, enable main pitch in my sampler, we'll either turn this on or off for this sampler, and you'll find that option in almost everything. This can also be automated for key changes within a song by right-clicking Create Automation Clip, which is pretty cool. If you're new to FL Studio, we got pattern song options for either playing in the channel rack or the playlist. We have our record button, which if you right-click is going to give us some options. Anything checked here will either record or not record. 
Automation records the movements of knobs and sliders. Notes records notes that are being played via MIDI into your piano roll. Audio will be things like my voice into this microphone or a guitar or other instrument played into your interface. And clips will be playlist clips that are triggered when in performance mode. Options, we've got recording starts playback. As soon as you click the record button, it's going to start playing for you to record. Disarm on stop, which means when you stop, then the master record, the arming button, will disengage, which will pretty much stop you from being able to do a second take until you re-engage it. And we've got enable recording markers, which goes off of times like this, where you can choose the action to punch in on a recording, for example, and then add another one for punch out. And this will automate my recording on and off. So now my recording automated on right when it crosses the punch in marker. And then when it crosses punch out, it will stop. We also have quantize options. These quantize options will only work when your global snap here is set to something other than none, cell, or line. If you have it set to bar, beat, or any of these, it'll quantize things to the bar or the beat. So note to generally keep this off, or if you keep it on, be aware of how these might affect that. Record to step sequencer will quantize everything to be at one of these steps as what's considered a zero length note, which just is one of these. Next notable option is going to be our tap to tempo. which will set our tempo to whatever we're tapping or feeling it at. We have metronome on or off. We have wait for input to start playing, which will wait for input to start playing. So for example, if I click play, see it's got these dots. I clicked my MIDI keyboard, gave it input, now it's playing. Three, two, one is our count in before we record. Those first notes, blend recording and loop recording will affect the way that your recording comes in, either auto-muted or not. Got a video on that above. Type to keyboard, which allows us to use the keyboard as MIDI. Scrolls to reach time marker, which is going to have us travel in our playlist as the timing goes. You'll notice this more on piano roll because piano roll is generally smaller. So if I place a note in here and we notice, versus with this off, nothing. Step editing takes the snap size of our piano roll, which right now is a quarter beat. And every single time you click something, it just steps to the next one. You don't have to click record or anything. We've got enable note and clip groups. So now that I selected two random notes, I can shift G, which will group them. So now, whatever I do to one, it does to both. I can Alt G which will ungroup them. If they are grouped, however, I can undo this, which will allow me to edit them separately, re-click it, and they are then again grouped. Multi-linked controller is pretty cool. If I click this, move a bunch of stuff, and then click it again, it's going to give me all these options to link my MIDI controller to. We can, of course, scroll patterns. If you're a beginner, we got our playlist, piano roll, channel rack, mixer, and browser, which my browser is hidden. And honestly, the rest of these options I don't usually ever touch and are generally accessible from in here. We do, however, get news from image line. And if we right click, we have the ability to edit our toolbar. Flex space and fix space are just gonna create spaces. So if I wanted to dock things over here to the right instead, I can put in a space and we can customize this however we want. Then we can come over here, save the preset to whatever we want it to be. And then when we're done, whatever we choose will be the way that it loads. We also have an option here for visuals. We can get rid of the separators. We can make flat buttons, as well as a pop-up hint bar, which is the exact same thing as this panel over here. And then we also have a hide button, which gets rid of it. You can just click the background to bring it back, or you can use F11, oh, 
or you can use Control F11 to hide or unhide it. And that just about covers it. We went from left to right across the toolbar discussing the things that are important or have features that you might be interested in. Of course, that's subjective from my perspective, but I really hope that this video was helpful. So if you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios.